Uh, thanks for inviting me to talk. I changed it up a little bit. I know that on the uh, schedule it's uh, angioplasty and stenting. Um, there's a lot of new information out from the recent Crest trial, so I'm still working on that talk, so I thought I'd change up a little bit and talk about spinal vascular malformations. Hope that's okay. Uh, I had no uh, relevant disclosures for this particular talk. So, a, um, first off, uh, what are what do we mean when we say spinal vascular malformations? Well, there are several types. There are intramedullary AVMs, akin to um, AVMs that we see in the uh, uh, brain substance. Uh, perimedullary AVS, so these are, these are uh, fistula along the surface of the cord, and they have a couple different presentation types. And then dural fistula of the um, spinal canal, and those are akin to dural fistulas of the head as well. And then there are extradural arteriovenous malformations and arteriovenous fistula. And finally, uh, there is one um, syndrome called Cobb syndrome uh, or metameric angiomatosis where there's a vascular malformation involving all levels of that particular uh, uh, metamere or uh, somatome. So in the uh, spine, the consequences of the AV shunting are either hemorrhage, so if there's a um, aneurysm or uh, weakened vein, uh, hemorrhage can occur, and that's uh, uh, seen with perimedullary fistula and AVMs. So I'll get into that in a minute. Venous hypertension is, is not uncommon with dural fistula. In fact, that is the method of presentation. So elevation of venous pressures leads to poor drainage of the spinal cord, uh, leading to neurologic deficit. And sometimes there are tremendously enlarged vascular structures that can lead to mass effect in the, in the limited space in the uh, spinal canal. And uh, arterial steel, uh, maybe. Uh, you know, that's always discussed uh, whether that actually occurs or not um, in the uh, spinal cord. So as you're familiar with the anatomy, there's uh, each segment has its uh, own uh, arterial arcade. Uh, there are the uh, aorta starts out uh, to the left of the spine in the, uh, uh, after the uh, uh, transverse arch of the aorta, and then uh, slowly winds its way anterior to the spine in the lower uh, lumbar, re in the lumbar region. So at each level, though, there is a right and left radicular artery or segmental artery, which then serves the, all the elements of that uh, uh, dermatome, somatome and uh, those paired arteries then are seen on the uh, aerodigram as they, as they uh, face to the right at the posterior aspect po or posterior lateral aspect of the aorta and then they march down um, sequentially becoming more uh, aligned with the vertebral body as the aorta comes more anterior. The primary blood supply to the spinal cord is the anterior spinal artery. And the anterior spinal artery has uh, typically a network of feeders uh, associated with it. Um, not a pointer, do you? Okay. Oh, so it's so a no pointer. All right. So that's fine. I'll keep my hands behind me. Uh, so the anterior spinal artery uh, has a primary supply within the thoracolumbar region. And we call that the uh, artery of Adam Kevets, which I can never spell well. Um, and that occurs uh, very classically, 60% of the time, from T9 to L3. <laughs> so it can be quite variable where it arises. Um, but that uh, supplies the vast majority of it. Once we get to the cervical region, there is typically uh, one vessel, uh, but there may be multiple. Uh, serving the uh, cervical region, and often we call that the artery of the cervical enlargement. Um, the, uh, uh, but there can be multiple vessels. In the cervical region, it's typically fed from the vertebrals or the um, thyrocervical trunk or costocervical arteries. Uh, and at the uh, junction of the two vertebral arteries as they form the basilar, uh, there is uh, that uh, unique sort of quadrangular configuration of the two anterior spinal arteries, as you see on the top of this figure, coming down, joining together, and forming the anterior spinal artery. Uh, 
So the primary supply to the spinal cord is quite limited with very few arteries serving a very uh, small but extensive anterior spinal artery network. And that supplies the anterior portion of the cord, uh, basically two-thirds of the portion of the cord. The uh, posterior columns are often more, well, more often fed by the posterior lateral spinal arteries, which, again, have a segmental distribution, uh, typically more like a web of vessels that connect up and down right to left, but don't typically form a long, continuous chain like the anterior spinal artery. And here we see a, a, the uh, aorta anteriorly, and this is, uh, uh, again, looking from above. So the aorta typically rests to the left of the vertebral body, um, and more left is in, in the higher um, thoracic region, and then more midline in the lumbar region. But we have the arteries arising from it, the sometimes called intercostal, I call them segmental arteries, uh, paired each side, running around the vertebral body, feeding the vertebral body in the uh, paravertebral musculature, uh, eventually uh, going out and feeding the transverse process and uh, rib. And so right underneath the rib is typically where the intercostal artery itself runs. Uh, there are various branches to, to all that segment. And the ones we're most critically concerned about are the ones running along the posterior aspect of the vertebral body in the epidural space, uh, because you can have vascular malformations there. Uh, and, of course, the radicular medullary artery running into the, along the nerve root into the, uh, uh, to obtain access to the spinal canal. And then uh, if there is a significant portion going anteriorly to feed the anterior spinal artery, then in the thoracolumbar region, that's Adam Kebetz. Uh, but all typically have that posterior branch you see uh, contributing to the posterior lateral uh, uh, longitudinal arterial trunk, which again, as I said, is not necessarily continuous. This is a higher view of that spinal uh, cord itself, uh, anterior spinal artery. And this figure is called the anterior median longitudinal arterial trunk, just because the more syllables, the better we sound. But you see, it, it goes into the uh, a central sulcus, dives deep, and then uh, penetrates through the cord. Uh, and that is why it supplies so much of the cord, the two-thirds of the cord, with the posterior lateral spinal artery really uh, filling the uh, um, posterior aspect of the spinal cord, and about a third. And then, you know, one posterior lateral spinal may be big on one side and fill both sides or, or fill from a, a segment above or below. <coughs> 